Thank you, Kendall. Appreciate it. Uh, and good morning to everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us today. It's uh, going to be a great show. Let me do the technical stuff here. What I'm going to do this morning is just give a quick overview of uh, what the Kentucky Native Plant Society uh, was up to in 2023. Uh, so uh, I like to begin all my presentations by just reminding us all of what the mission of the Kentucky Native Plant Society uh, is about. Uh, oftentimes we get caught up in projects and doing things and we forget the big picture. So I just like to like to repeat it. The mission of the Kentucky Native Plant Society is to promote education about, appreciation for, and conservation of our native flora. So uh, the year began with uh, our third virtual Kentucky Botanical Symposium uh, back on January 6th of 2023. Uh, this was, uh, had some great speakers. Uh, and I won't go through them all. Uh, Alan Weekly, Noor Salam, uh, Justin Thomas, Bridget Williams, and, and myself and Tara uh, were all speakers last year. All of uh, last year's uh, presentations are on the KNPS website. So if you wanna, if you weren't in attendance last year and you wanna see what they had to say, knps.org uh, and just do a search on botanical symposium and, and you can find it. So um, we then in, the, in April, we began Wildflower Week. And this is uh, uh, something we began during the, pan, uh, at the pandemic when we couldn't get together. We decided that uh, uh, in addition to Wildflower Weekend, we the week before, we would have a week-long botany blitz where people went out um, into uh, natural areas in their uh, area. We set up, uh, or Vanessa Volker set up a project on iNaturalist, and we asked people to go out and make observations and post them to the botany blitz. Um, and it was quite successful. We had uh, a total of 3,747 observations during the Blitz. And those observations comprised over 650 species of uh, plants, which included 603 vascular plants, 37 mosses, and 10 liverworts. Uh, what really makes the Botany Blitz uh, work is that in addition to the op observers, we had 66 observers, we have identifiers. And if you don't know how uh, iNaturalist works, you put up an observation, and then when other people identify it as correctly, uh, it becomes a, a research-grade observation. And we had over 165 identifiers from both Kentucky and other states. So thank you to all the uh, uh, identifiers as well as the observers. So uh, Wildflower Weekend 2023 uh, was unique in, in several ways. Uh, it was held at Cumberland Falls State Resort Park. Uh, and this was the first time in 30 some odd years uh, that we had Wildflower Weekend at a location different from Natural Bridge State Park. Uh, we're, we, the board had decided a while back that going forward, we're going to have Wildflower Weekend at Natural Bridge State Resort Park in even numbered years. So 2024, this coming year, this year is gonna be back at Natural Bridge. And then in odd number of years, we'll try to go a, to a different park or natural area uh, in, in Kentucky so that we can see different botany, different uh, geology and so forth. Uh, let's see, what, what else? Oh. Uh, it was also unique in that we had a record number of 19 hikes in various areas 
of the uh, around calls. We went, had some hikes, went out to uh, the the uh, natural bridge, or I mean, uh, natural, yeah, uh, natural bridge, scenic, natural arch scenic area, and also to the Big South Fork uh, area. So it was quite, quite uh, uh, spread out, got spread out, and a lot of people had a good time, except the group that got completely rained out on one of the hikes, but uh, <laughs> even they uh, weren't, weren't too upset. Uh, Friday evening, we had a, a Friday night social where we went to, to one of the uh, 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 picnic areas uh, at Cumberland Falls along the Cumberland River, built a fire and just had a lot of nice fellowship. Uh, a neat part of that, one of our speakers, James Kaiser, who's a herpetologist, uh, he, since we were right along some cliffs along the bluff, uh, he took out small groups from the social that evening to look for salamanders. And uh, uh, it was fun and successful. Uh, they made multiple observations of several dis different species of salamanders. Uh, so that was, was kind of neat. Saturday evening, we came together for uh, our uh, evening talks. Uh, it was an overflow crowd, and for anybody who was there, we do apologize for the crowd. Uh, it it was pretty crowded in in that room, uh, but it it was quite good. James Kaiser gave a talk on Southern Kentucky landscape features and the associated rare species, and then Chris Benda from Il Illinois, also known as the Illinois Botanizer, if you may know him as. He gave a talk on botanical humor. You never knew plants were so funny. And then the evening ended with our annual raffle. The grand prize of the raffle, which has been the case for many years, was a beautiful carving uh, by KNPS member Bob Van Hoff uh, of showing the pink lady slipper orchid at three stages of inflorescence development. Really neat carving. And the carvings were won by Mary Alice and Chris Bedwell, Bidwell, who are longtime members of KNPS. So that was neat. We also raffled off 30 native, uh, native plants. And the plants were donated by partners at Ironweed Nursery, Kentucky Dropseed Native Plant Nursery, and the Arboretum at uh, State Botanical Garden of Kentucky. So it uh, was a great wildflower weekend. Oh, and uh, up in the upper left-hand corner here, here was our logo that was developed by our very own Kendall McDonald for the Wildflower Weekend that we then put on t-shirts and such. Uh, we had, uh, as we've always done, we had field trips uh, throughout the state, uh, beginning in June at Lily Cornette Woods. That was a joint uh, field trip led by the Lily Cornette Woods staff. Uh, uh, we then uh, went to Fleming County in July uh, with Alan Abbott. That was a joint field trip with Kentucky chapter of backcountry hunters and anglers. Uh, I was to lead a Ballard wildlife management uh, area hike down in Ballard County. Uh, and when Heat indexes got up over 105 degrees. So uh, we unfortunately decided to cancel that. Uh, not the kind of conditions you want to be tromping around in the swamps of Western Kentucky. So, but then in September, uh, Alan Abbott gave another uh, field trip down at, uh, at Pine Creek. And then uh, we ended the field trip season in November uh, with David Taylor leading a trip to Ber Berea Woods. So. Uh, and uh, Deb White, our, our field trip uh, coordinator, um, is already hard at work on coming up with field trips for 2024. Uh, a very neat uh, activity in the year uh, was our wetland plant ID workshops. This was uh, two workshops on June, June 27th, 28th, and 29th. The 27th was a workshop for beginners, and uh, 28th and 29th was a two-day workshop for intermediate level uh, participants. Uh, 
we had over 26 participants involved. Uh, the workshop instructor, Nathaniel Pilla from Midwest Biological Surveys was great. Uh, he focused on more difficult taxa, such as graminoids and aquatic species, which people found quite interesting. And neat, neat aspect uh, besides the workshop itself was that Henderson County, which is where it was held, um, hasn't been, has been understudied botanically. And so several new county records were discovered in the three days. Uh, now they included multiple species of duckweed, lemna, uh, watermeal, wolfia, and broad water, waterweed, Elodea canadensis, and joint paps, paps, paspalum, sorry about that. Uh, and they also saw many uh, state watch-listed species, including hemlock water press, parsnip and white nymph. Uh, yep, sorry. Uh, our fall meeting was uh, held on October 28th down at Audubon State uh, Park in Henderson County. Uh, the day began with uh, at the Audubon Museum and Nature Center. We had, uh, and then we had a couple great talks presentation about Leah's bog lichen uh, by Kendall, and also a very neat talk about native pollinators found in forests by KNPS member and invertebrate biologist with at OKMP, uh, Katie Cody. And uh, uh, if uh, you, Katie just uh, basically took much of her presentation and wrote up a really neat article about pollinators uh, in the Lady Slipper newsletter, and that's on our website, so uh, check it out. Uh, one of the things that uh, was really neat uh, this year, uh, you may not be aware of that, but for many years we've been giving out student research grants uh, to um, uh, undergraduate and graduate students uh, over the years, we've done that. We've given out over $9,000 uh, of student research grants. And this year, we started a new grant program uh, called the Pollinator Garden Grant uh, Partnership. It was a uh, program we did works. And the idea basically, <coughs> excuse me, is that we'd uh, provide financial resources and support resources to schools and or uh, nonprofit organizations wanting to establish or expand native plantings. Uh, we provided the funds to purchase it. Uh, uh, the grantee uh, is the caretaker of the garden and the site must have an education uh, as part of its mission and offer public access. Uh, went really well. We had six uh, schools involved putting up uh, uh, native pollinator gardens. And they're gonna be, we're gonna follow up. And uh, one part of the bit and grant was that uh, uh, we would follow up for two years because so many pollinator gardens get built and then people forget about them and they just go into uh, disrepair. So uh, we wanted to have a program that follows up was so successful, we're gonna be doing it again this year. So watch the uh, 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 Lady Slipper for uh, notes about that. And with that, thank you all. <laughs>